that you guys were able to be with us tonight. For those of you watching online, thank you for tuning in. It's a privilege and an honor that we get to do this every year. Uh, it's something that we don't take lightly. The actors, the crew, the singers, the musicians, everybody who has a part in this, uh, they don't take this lightly uh, because they know what they are doing is they are bringing the story of Jesus Christ to life for you. So tonight, the biggest point of all of this is if you don't know him, we trust that by the end of tonight, you will know what he did for you. Because everything, and this is just, this is just a portrayal, this is just acting. There was so much more to this story and through his life, but everything that he ever did from the day that the angel came to Mary to the day that Jesus said, I must go and sit at the right hand of the Father, everything in between was done for you. Every single thing he did in his ministry was because he loved you so much. So throughout tonight, as they bring you this that's entitled, We Praise, I want you to be able to praise the Lord tonight for all that he's done in your life. So reflect on all that as things are happening this evening. There's going to be times when it's going to be dark in here. There'll be times when it's loud. The crucifixion scene is, is kind of a little intense. So you have little ones. Just prepare them, comfort them if they need comforted. Um, but I wanted to bring that to you. Please, if you will, try to limit your movements through the aisles because sometimes there'll be movements going up and down the aisles. And as I mentioned, it'll be dark in times. But we're so glad you're with us. If you'll give us just a moment, we'll get going. As we present to you tonight, we praise. Immediately after his baptism, the Spirit called Jesus out into the wilderness. He fasted there for 40 days. Satan watched, waited, and tried to tempt Jesus. Jesus rebuked him and returned to his ministry of the broken and to healing the sick. Jesus began to choose and call his disciples to join him. He also continued to teach in the temple and to heal those who came to him, the blind, the lame, and the sick, most of who had no hope except from Jesus. If only somehow they could get to him, they believed he would heal their bodies. But often he gave them an extra healing, not only in their bodies, but also their souls. Jesus, you look hungry. If you really are God's son, why don't you take one of these stones and turn them into bread? The pinnacle of the temple, then. If you really are God's son, you should throw yourself down from there, and he will send his angels to save you just in time. It is written, God is not contested. All the kingdoms and all the power in the world are mine, but I will give them to you if you just bow down and worship me. Away from me, Satan! The Lord God Almighty shall be worshipped, and him only you shall serve alone.
I don't need you, man. Hold on a second. Let me see this. Hold this. Master! Peter, come here. This is what I've been telling you about. Jesus of Nazareth. Is this your Messiah, Andrew? <clears throat> you are Simon, son of Jonah. From now on, you will be called the Rock. What does that mean, Andrew, the Rock? Peter, just listen to him. Just listen. Andrew, Peter, may I go in your boat and speak to the people? Yes. This is no place for preaching. This is our boat. <clears throat> you better be right about this, Andrew. I am the bread of life. He who comes to me will never hunger, and he who believes in me will never thirst. For all who come to me, for all who come to me, God has given to me. And anyone who comes to me, I will by no means cast away. For I have come down from heaven, but not to do my will, but to do the will of the one who has sent me. For this is the will of the Father, for he is the one who has sent me. Anyone who sees the Son and believes in Him will have everlasting life, and I will raise Him on the last day. Who does this guy think he is? I mean, is this not Jesus, son of Joseph, whose father and mother I know? How can he possibly say he's come down from heaven? Do not murmur amongst yourselves. No one can come to me unless the Father draws them to me. For all who see the Son and believe in Him will have everlasting life. But he, he who does not believe, he shall not see life, but the wrath of God will abide in him. Peter, throw down your nets just once more. Rabbi, we've worked all night and caught nothing. It would take a miracle to catch fish. Do as he asks, please. Nevertheless, at your word, we'll let down one net. Andrew, my net is caught. I've worked all night and now my net is caught. It's not caught. Pull it. It's full of fish. It's full of fish. Hey, James, John, he's right. It's fish. Food for our family. Pull. That's impossible. How can this be at this hour of the day? How did you do that? That's impossible. You? You could do this? Depart from me, Lord, for I am a sinful man. I did not believe, Andrew, what he said concerning you. Peter, look at me. You are forgiven, Peter. Come and follow me. Yes, Lord, I will follow you. Andrew, John, James, come and follow me. Yes, Lord. Philip, Nathaniel, yes, Thomas, come join the others. Matthew, leave your tax collecting. James, son of Alphaeus, Simon, come. Judas, Judas Iscariot, come and follow me. Thaddeus, come. Now you men will be my disciples. Come and follow me. Andrew, Peter, come have a seat. John, come on. Now, who does everyone say that I am? Some say that you are John the Baptizer. Some say Jeremiah or one of the prophets. Now, Peter, you tell me, who do you say that I am? Lord, you are the Christ, the Son of the living God. Then blessed are you, Peter, for flesh and blood did not reveal this to you, but my Father who is in heaven. Men, for now we will stay here and rest. For soon we will go to Jerusalem, but for now we need to rest.
Jesus that day understood that by his words, he made himself to be God. The words he chose, I am, showed the people that he claimed to be Jehovah God, the self-sustaining one, the great I am. And there were so many miracles happening that day, but there were also other things going on. Jesus moved from crowd to crowd, from station to station, and everywhere he went, the crowds moved in around him. And every single time they showed up, he did the miraculous. If they would just learn to hold on to the hem of his garment, they would find healing, they would find peace, they would find joy in all of their situations. There he is. We found him. Master, master, we've been looking all over for you, and you retreat to this place? Yes, Lord, your fame is growing. All of Galilee has heard of you. The people want to see you. Then it is now time that I must go. Go? Go? Go where? Why go now, Lord? There's so many people here that are in need. For I have come to the whole house of Israel. I must go to the other cities and preach there also. Andrew, take the disciples in the boat and cross the sea, and I will meet you on the other side. Master, if we take the boat to the other side, how are you going to meet us? Do not worry. Go. It is I. Help stop the ship. Make it come to you. Peter, come. Andrew, he called me. It is the Lord. Peter, where are you going? I'm going. Help me, Lord. I'm sinking. Why do you not believe? Oh, you of little faith. impossible. The sea, it's like glass. He even speaks to the wind. Let's get out of the boat.
Blessed are the poor in spirit, for theirs is the kingdom of heaven. Blessed are those who mourn, for they will be comforted. Blessed are the meek, for they will inherit the earth. Blessed are those who hunger and thirst after righteousness, for they will be filled. Blessed are the merciful, for they will obtain mercy. Blessed are the pure in heart, for they will see God. Blessed are the peacemakers, for they will be called children of God. Blessed are those who are persecuted for righteousness' sake. Blessed are you when people insult you and say all kinds of things against you for my name's sake. 
For great is your reward in heaven, as with the prophets who were before you. And when you pray, do not be like the hypocrites, for they love to stand praying aloud in the street corners and in their synagogues to be heard by others. Truly I tell you, they have the reward. But when you pray, go into your room, lock the door, and pray to your Father who is in secret. Then your Father, seeing what is done in secret, will reward you. And when you pray, do not keep on babbling like the pagans, for they think they will be heard for their many words. But I tell you, your Father knows what you have to say before you even speak it. This, then, is how you should pray. Our Father who art in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come, your will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our debts, as we also forgive our debtors. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from the evil one. For if you forgive others, your Father will do well to forgive you. But if you do not forgive others, your Father will by no means forgive you of your sins. They do not need to go away. You give them something to eat. We only have five loaves of bread and two fish. Bring them to me.
to us who who believe. And according to his might, the working of his mighty power, which he wrote in Christ, when he raised him from the dead, and he set him at his own right hand in heavenly places. And God hath put all things under his feet and gave him to be the head over all things to the church, which is his body, the fullness which fulfilleth all in all. All were created by him and for him, and he is before all things. And through him all things consist, and he is the head of the church. Wherefore God hath also highly exalted him and given him a name which is above every name. That name of Jesus every knee will bow, and every tongue will confess that Jesus Christ is Lord of Lords and King of Kings. He's Lord of Lords. Hallelujah. Claiming him to be our king? <laughs> what a freak. Teacher, teacher, we know that by looking at all who follow you, that you show no personal favoritism, and that by your life, even your very word, you truly do teach the way of God. Therefore, tell us, teacher, is it lawful that we should pay taxes to Caesar or not? Why do you test him? He is the Christ. We'll see. Show me this coin you use for paying taxes. Now you tell me, whose inscription and image is on this coin? Uh, it's Caesar's. Then give to Caesar. And give to God what is God's. That's right. Beware of these scribes and Pharisees, for they are like whitewashed tombs. Yeah. yeah that's right. Yeah. Outwardly, they appear to be beautiful, but on the inside they are filled with dead man's bones. Amen. Beware of them, for they appear to be righteous, but on the inside they are filled with hypocrisy. Yes. yes. Now come, let us go to the temple. I must pray. Why are you here? What's the price you're willing to give me if I deliver Jesus to you? Wait right here. Thirty pieces of silver is the price we are willing to pay. But only after you have delivered them to us. Rest assured, I can deliver Jesus to you. I'll send word when I have the right opportunity and away from all the crowds. But for now, I must be going before I move. As much as the people wanted Jesus to be their king, the Pharisees wanted to prove him to be a fraud. They knew that if Jesus continued to win the people and they made him king, they would lose their position as leaders of the nation. They were so interested in maintaining that position that they were blinded to the truth that Jesus taught. But every time they tried to trap him, they failed. 
Jesus remained completely in control in the face of each attack they made, causing some of them to shake their heads and say, never a man spoke like this man. Those of us who listened and tried to understand what Jesus taught began to realize that the void found in each of our lives could only be filled by Jesus. Before coming to Jerusalem, Jesus had begun to tell the disciples of some things that confused and troubled them. They had not yet grasped the full purpose of his life or the depth of his love, a love that would be betrayed by one and that would be denied by another, a love so great that Jesus, who never sinned, would face shame and be tortured and willingly carry the weight of our sins on the cross so that we could be forgiven. The disciples didn't understand what he meant. They thought Jesus was destined to become a political redeemer, a leader who would come to overthrow Rome and become king over Israel. This talk of death made no sense to them. But later that week, Jesus sent two of his disciples to prepare the Passover meal in an upper room at a follower's home. of 
testify tonight. God is born and able. Oh, I've seen you do it, Jesus. God is born and able. God is born. Release him, why? Because you burn a conscience? The deed is done. No, please. He doesn't deserve this. He's innocent. Please, you don't understand. Just, please, just release him. Take the money back. I don't, oh my God, what have I done? I betrayed my master. Oh, God, what's happened? They've probably killed him by now, John. How could we leave him like that? What can we do? I've got to hide. But you, you told him to follow Jesus. You must be mistaken. I don't know anyone named Jesus. Yes, you do. You're one of his disciples. I promise you, I don't know anyone named Jesus. I saw you. You were with him in the garden. I promise you, in the name of all names that is holy, I don't know anyone named Jesus. Oh, no. 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 What's the meaning of this? What has this man done to deserve such treatment? We would not have brought him to you if he were not a criminal. He has proclaimed to be our Messiah and our King. He has violated our laws. Then you take him and judge him by your own law. Your Excellency, may I remind you that we have no right to judge anyone whose crimes may result in his own death. You speak of death. Unchain him and bring him to me. Are you the king of the Jews? You say that I am king, but I have come for this reason, to testify to the truth. Truth? What's truth? I've examined this man, and I find no fault in him. I will scourge him and release him. No. If you release him, this man, you are no friend of Caesar's. Surely anyone who has proclaimed to be a king opposes Caesar. Is that so? Do you not hear what they say about you? Do you not know that I have authority to crucify you or to release you? You would have no authority unless it had been given to you from above. For this reason, my accusers, the ones who have delivered me to you, they have the greater sin. Again, I have examined this man and found no fault in him. He's, He's a, a criminal. criminal. However, you have a custom that I should release him to you a prisoner for the Passover. I will bring this matter before the people and let them decide what will be done with this man. Now leave. Centurion, scourge him before we bring him before the people. Maybe seeing the blood will satisfy the thirst for his flesh. Ensure you don't kill him. Soldier, prepare him for the scourging. Men, come forward. <laughs> we have a king among us. <laughs> Look at this king. I think this king needs a crown. Make me a crown from that thorn bush. <laughs> Look at you, king. This king needs a robe. Bring me that cloth. 
Hurry up with that robe. Here you are, king. Hurry up with that crown. Turn around. All bow down to the king of the Jews. Ah! Ah! Enough! Who are you? And why do you not resist? Pick him up. Chain him. Come on, king. Let it begin. Come on, King, get up! Get up! Pilate said not to kill him. Pick him up. Your religious leaders have delivered Jesus of Nazareth to me for judgment, but I find no fault in him. Behold the man. Now I wish to honor your custom and release to you a prisoner for the Passover. Shall I therefore release Jesus? No, not this man. Give, Give us Barabbas. Barabbas. Release Barabbas. There's no guilt in this man according to Roman law. But we have a law, and he must die, for he's claimed to be the Son of God. Give us Barabbas! Give us Barabbas! Barabbas! Then what will you have me do with Jesus? Crucify him! Crucify him! This man does not deserve death. Crucify him! Then what will I do with Jesus? Crucify him! Death to Jesus! Crucify him! Again, I find no fault in him. You take him and do what you will, but that man's blood is not on me. Fine, then let his blood be upon us and our children. Crucify him! Crucify Take him away! Take him away! Do with your wish. But remember, this man's blood is not on my hands. Get the cross.
was a great demonstration of love. My Savior's death on a cross. What an incredible life and an extraordinary ministry. But now it was over, all over, and my heart was broken. What a waste. But you see, I have no great theological illusions of grandeur about Jesus. All the hosannas and the messiahs, they had escaped me. But if anyone ever knew all about Jesus, they would know he worked every day in the carpenter shop. And he taught every day at the synagogue. People heard him speak many times and watched him perform many miracles and change the lives of people. Everyone's reason for their grief was simple. They would miss him. But the truth that he could somehow be our savior, that he was more than an exemplary man and just a great teacher, that thought had eluded me. After Calvary, the people were overpowered by their personal loss. Their savior was dead and a big part of their life was over. Their despair was abject and absolute until three days later. The name of Jesus spread across the countryside and stretched out to the whole world because Jesus was alive and he still is tonight. So rejoice, oh Christian, rejoice.
night this has been. It's been a night of song, of worship, a night of praise. And the good news is this is just a taste of what it's going to be like when we get together around the throne. It's not going to be very long until an angel is going to step out on the gateway of glory and sound the call. And on that day, every knee is going to bow and every tongue is going to confess that Jesus truly is the name above all names. city called glory so bright and so fair when I entered the gate I cried holy
know about or being open to that because of this phrase right here. And this is why. tonight we recognize that all the scripture comes to mind of Psalms 150 verse 1 just says let everything that hath breath to do what praise to praise the Lord but then I recognize that once the tomb is open of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ that actually when the women came not knowing that the tomb was open, but as they arrived, the angels were there. There's one verse of scripture that just stood out to me of what the angel had to say to the women. When he said, he is not here speaking of Jesus for he is risen as he said. Now it stands out to me that as Jesus had previously said, he was just fulfilling what he was sent to do. And then the angel said, come see. I believe tonight that as we praise, as we glorify, as we magnify, that Jesus Christ, who is Lord of Lords and King of Kings, who is alive, and we're so thankful tonight that as you call upon him, he still delivers, he still hears, and he still heals and he still makes a way even where there seems to be no way I go into the Old Testament and close in closing tonight of Joshua 24 verse 15 where he said choose you this day whom you will serve we have a lot of choices in our day to day but I'm so glad that there's a choice available through our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ because God so loved us so much 
And when Joshua said, he declared these words as for me and my house, we will serve the Lord. So we don't come tonight just to entertain you. I'm glad that you enjoyed. I'm glad that we all have a good time. And we recognize that this is just fulfilling an action or being acted out. But what I'm here tonight to tell you is that this really and truly did happen and that Jesus Christ did die on the cross. But aren't you glad the cross is empty tonight? And that he was buried, but in a borrowed tomb. You know why he was buried in a borrowed tomb? Because he came out like he said he was going to do. And so he didn't need one for himself on a permanent basis. So he came out. And he's alive, and here's the message forevermore. So you can call upon his name tonight. You can know that he is the Lord. So I'd like to go to the Lord in prayer. And as we pray, if you don't know him as your Savior, if you'll invite him in. He would love to start having a day-to-day -day relationship with you. That you can know that as his word says that he can be the friend that sticks closer than a brother. I don't know what your day's been like or your week or month or maybe possibly your, your year, but what I do know is that the Lord has not forsaken and the Lord has not forgotten. The Lord says, cast all your care upon him for he cares for you. So Father, I sense your presence to Lord, we come to you thanking you that we are able to praise you and to lift up your name and to know that you are the answer and that through you all things are possible. So Lord, for ones that may not know you as Savior, I pray that we won't miss this opportunity because we're not guaranteed the rest of tonight, much less tomorrow. We don't know what it holds for us. But we know, Lord, as we call upon you, that you said you would make a way where there seems to be none. So we lean upon that in your name tonight. Amen and amen. We don't know what tomorrow holds, do we? Perhaps we don't know the unexpected things that will come our way. But I pray tonight that you will have and know that Jesus Christ is there to be with you every step now. So tonight as we dismiss, let me invite you, if you would be able to do so, this Sunday morning. I know a lot of places have different things of set in from churches about sunrise services. Well, we've been doing a resurrection prayer walk call it and we meet at the out wild park 6 45 a.m this sunday morning we'll have a police escort across the city we've been given and granted permits again this year for that i'm so very grateful we've also been given a permit to stop at the courthouse and be able to pray over our community so we'd like for you to meet with us if you have no other plans this Sunday morning and join in that walk. But we'll also have ride available. If you don't care to make the walk, but you want to ride it with us, you're welcome to do so. We'll have praise and worship music. The cross that you saw Christ on, well, we don't make it quite as heavy. We do put a wheel on it, but we pull it across the city with us. So I hope you can join with us then. And if you have a place of worship, this Sunday morning, then we know you'll be there. But if you do not, we invite you back here at 1030. And we'll be doing some of this as well during the service then and also with a message. And I don't believe I've ever announced my message, but I knew over a week and a half ago, and this is very unusual for me, the way that I feel to even know a week and a half ago what I would be preaching in the morning. Or in the, our Sunday morning, I should say. 
but I will actually be preaching on skull and bones on Easter Sunday morning. Very interesting for me on the journey that the Lord has had me on to preach up for this Sunday. So if you're not somewhere else, come and see what this message has to say to us. I'm already taken into a lot of areas of what this is going to be speaking into our life Sunday. Would you stand with me, please? Thank you for coming. And I hope that you'll encourage these that took part in this program and, and let them know how much you enjoyed and appreciate so much for their hard work. On your way out, if you would like, we don't really set a budget. We walk by faith on a lot of these things. And uh, But if you'd like to worship the Lord and give it on your way out, they'll make that available through the foyer. And you're welcome to give. And it'll just go to continue to help us for what the days will be ahead that we can continue to expand. <clears throat> and because uh, um, so I think we had a technical difficulty what held us up at the beginning. Um, I don't know if I should tell you, but I believe Jesus' batteries died. And uh, that's what you were waiting on was, I don't know why Jesus needs batteries. But anyway, I feel like that was our technical difficulty, that you were so very patient at the beginning for us to get underway. Turn to someone, greet them. In the name of the Lord, you're dismissed. God bless you for being with us tonight.